Good evening, Journey family. It's Pastor Ray joining you for another Wednesday night. Thanks for tuning in. We're um, sitting in the fellowship hall in the church doing what we did last Wednesday, which is um, uh, uh, joining you from another location in the church just as a reminder of what a blessing it is to have this facility and to uh, um, give you something to look forward to returning to. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here alone. I don't even have any coffee back there in the coffee pot. But it won't be long. We'll all be having hot coffee, wonderful cookies and treats, and enjoying one another's fellowship again. Well, I've got a wonderful announcement that I'm so excited to be able to share with you tonight. As you may have already heard, the governor of Missouri has lifted the restriction which prevented us from being able to have public services here at the church. Now, his... Uh, Lifting of the stay-at-home order is not a complete lifting, and so there are still some restrictions that are going to be in place. And so what we're going to do is, over the course of the next week, start putting the information together so that we can get it out to you and prepare you for the resumption of our services. And uh, we'll be doing that um, through the live stream coming up this Sunday. And, um, and any uh, other information we may need to put out um, a week from tonight on the Wednesday live stream. And so our goal is on May the 10th, on Mother's Day, to have our first service back here in our own sanctuary. I can't wait, and I know you, you're excited about it too. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and get into the Word once again. I'd like to go to a passage of Scripture in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse number 8, where it says, for those of us that are followers of God, that we will be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. Can you get in a, a picture of that? You know, just imagine you're floating along one of the, the wonderful rivers that we have uh, so close to here, and you see these trees all along the riverbank. They are so solid, they're so strong, because their root system is going into fertile soil, but not only in, into great fertile soil, but they have a supply of water that just never runs out. And so these trees are, are, um, are very lush, they're very solid, they're, they're, um, they're stable, and that's the picture that God's giving us as His children, that we're like those trees that have a supply that never runs out. We have the Holy Spirit. We have living waters that flow um, into us and out of our belly, and that supply never runs dry. And so we're not dependent on the elements, and so we don't have to fear when heat comes. And there is heat that comes. There, as we've been talking to you in recent weeks, there are tests, there are trials that come to the believer. But as... Um, as children of God, we have a supply that comes from the Lord. And so we don't have to fear. Uh, we can stay in faith. You know, a tree doesn't worry. Am I going to have enough water to, um, to, to, to get a drink from the river, so to speak? Will I have enough nutrition? Will I have enough uh, moisture to be able to satisfy all of the leaves that I have and the fruit that may be produced off of my branches? No, a tree that's planted by the waters has a supply that just keeps it lush and solid, as we said, all the time. And it tells us here in this verse also that we don't have to be anxious in the year of drought. And so even when extreme trials come, um, there's still a water source. There's still a supply that's going to be flowing. And those deep roots that go way down are going to be able to get that moisture. And so it may look on the outside like the, like the river's almost dried up. But, uh, but there is still some moisture down in the ground. And that's where those roots are. And so even though you may not be able to see it, they're able to draw the nutrition, the moisture, um, the minerals that come through with that moisture, the root system, right up into the trunk and then through the branches and out to the leaves. And so those leaves never wither and the fruit will never cease from, from uh, yielding, uh, yielding forth. And so what a picture, what an exciting thing that we have um, that God's telling us that we are like those trees by the water. You know, when I was reading this particular verse, it, 
it just uh, it caused me to um, go over to Psalm chapter 34 and um, and we're gonna tonight go ahead and read the whole passage from Psalm 34 where uh, uh, we'll break it down one verse at a time I believe it'll be a real blessing to you in the first verse Psalm 34 it says I bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth Hallelujah. You know, and that's got to be our heart, to bless the Lord at all times. Good times, bad times, no matter what it looks like, we're called on to bless the Lord at all times. Now, I want you to notice that, that the psalmist is saying, I bless the Lord. You and I have got to make a decision that no matter what's going on, we will bless the Lord at all times. It's a decision that we have to make. And so rather than what rather than mumble and complain and talk about all of the, the bad things that are going on, we need to just be blessing the Lord all the time. And you know, if I'm blessing the Lord all the time, I'm not going to have enough time to murmur, complain, to gossip, and to backbite. Now, the next verse says, My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. You know, we don't have anything in and of ourselves to be bragging about, to be boasting about. Our soul should make its boast in the Lord. You know what I have to boast about? I'm a child of God. I'm not better than anyone, but I am certainly better off because Jesus Christ has come into my life and, um, and saved me from my sin. And so I'm no better than anybody else, but I'm better off because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. I know that I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to live, live with God for all of eternity. I know that as a child of God that He is going to always supply my needs. He's always going to take care of me. And so what a blessing uh, it is. And so He'll help us, and we can trust in that, and we shouldn't be trusting in ourselves. The next verse says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know, I'm excited about being a believer, but I'm also excited to be able to share that good news with you and with others. There's so many people that are out there. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's someone that we're going to come in contact with at the store tomorrow. They need Jesus. And so this scripture tells us, um, that we should be inviting others to magnify the Lord with us. You know, we're, we're not lone rangers. We are part of the family of God. And so we should be worshiping the Lord, magnifying the Lord together. Let's exalt His name together. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus. It goes on to say, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You know, God, when we pray, when we seek Him, He will be found. He will hear us. And when He hears us, He will deliver us from all of our fears. We have no reason to be afraid. God is on our side. It says in verse number 5 that they looked at Him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. In verse 6, it goes on to say, The poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. You know, no matter what the challenge is, even the financial challenges that seem to try to come against us at times, it says that this poor man cried out and the Lord heard him. Once again, the psalmist is saying that when he cries out to God, that the Lord hears him. Isn't that exciting? The Lord hears us when we cry out. Praise the name of the Lord. And what does it say? When the Lord hears us, He saves him out of all of his troubles. And so whatever has impoverished you, whatever's caused you to have lack, God will save you from those troubles. He will bring you to a land of plenty. And that's such good news. Verse number 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him and delivers them. The angel of the Lord will encamp around those who fear Him. And it doesn't mean fear in the sense of uh, being terrified and where, you, where you're trembling and you want to run away. No, this is the reverential fear and awe of God. 
We need to have a reverence for God. We need to have a holy awe of the Lord and the things of God. And when we do, God will deliver us out of all the troubles that we may be experiencing. Now, in verse number 8, it goes on to say, O taste and see that the Lord is good. (laughs) Hallelujah. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. You know, God's inviting us to taste and see that He's good, to try Him out. Once again, if you're listening to this message tonight and you don't know the Lord personally, you've never asked Him to come into your heart, you've never made Him the Lord of your life, then then just listen to what the psalmist is saying. Taste. Try it out. Give it a test. Have you ever went to Sam's or or uh, even Walmart from time to time? We'll have the little stands out and they're giving away samples. What are they doing? They're saying, taste and see how good our product is. Well, the psalmist is telling us that we should taste and see that the Lord is good. Try him out and find out just how wonderful he really is. And the Bible promises, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Well, what does it mean to be blessed? It means to be empowered to prosper. And so when we trust in God, He empowers us to prosper. Then in verse number 9, it says, O fear the Lord, you His saints. There is no one, uh, I'm sorry, there is no want to those who fear Him. You know, once again, we're reminded that we will not want, we will not lack, We will not be impoverished. When we fear the Lord, when we're trusting in the Lord, we will not have lack in our lives. In verse number 10, it says, The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack for any good thing. The promise of God for you tonight is that when you seek God and 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 truly worship Him, truly seek Him, truly follow Him, that you will not lack for anything. You know, He is our source. He is the place, the one that we need to be looking to, the place we ought to be going um, uh, for our provision, for our supply. And when we do that, we will have all of our needs supplied, all of our needs met according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Verse number 11 says, Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. You know, the Scripture is telling us that we can be taught to fear God. You know, it is so important for us to feed on the Word of God. It's so important for us to be challenged by the Word of God, to be hearing uh, the truth that's contained in God's Word. You know, we should be listening to uh, to uh, ministry that's going forth, that's, that's revealing who God is, what His nature is, the fact that God does um, uh, frown upon sin. His wrath is going to be uh, unleashed on sin someday. If we live a life in rebellion to God, if we don't trust in the Lord, if we don't live for Him and turn away from our sin and turn toward Him, there will be a day of reckoning. There will be a day where we account for our own unrighteousness. And so it is important for us to learn to fear the Lord. In verse number 12, it says, Who is the man who desires life? Let me pause there. Who is the man, who is the woman who desires to live, to live forever, to truly be alive? It says, And loves many days that he may see good. Do you desire life? Do you desire to have a long life in in the natural? Do you desire to see good in the life that you are living? Who is that that's, that's desiring these things? Um, it's the person who does this. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Verse 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So here in these two verses, we're, we're, we're told that if we want to have a long life, if we want to see good days, if we want to see our needs met, then what we need to do is to keep our tongue from evil. We need to keep our lips from, from uh, speaking deceit, from lying, from telling things that aren't true. And you know, 
when you think about that particular verse, you can lie from just uh, the words in your mouth. And let me switch that back to that verse. Um, you can lie with the words from your mouth uh, by repeating something that's not true, repeating something that's not accurate. You know, there is so much stuff that's going out, even on supposed news sources right now, that are not true. Some of it's totally fabricated and, and gets proven to be so. Some of it, it's it's... It's partially true, but it's it's got a, a twist to it. It's got a, a particular um, uh, viewpoint that's 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 different than than the real truth. And so, even though they may uh, the, they may say some words that have been spoken, or or they may be reporting something that happened, um, they're not giving you the big picture, the full picture. You know, only God really does have the the big picture the whole picture, that he sees everything. One of our former youth members that, uh, in, that we had in Pennsylvania wrote a, a post on her Facebook uh, earlier today that uh, was real interesting. She was just sharing from her heart that, that, um, you know, that, that you know, an image where she said, picture a monument, a statue um, that's very beautiful and, and amazing. And, and somebody is, is facing that particular statue from a particular point of view. They've got a camera. They're shooting images of it. And, and they see it just from that perspective. But there's other people surrounding the statue, admiring the, the artistry of this monument. And each one is facing from their own viewpoint. And so they're limited in their perception of the monument. They're not seeing the whole thing. They're seeing one particular view. And, uh, and then she went on to say, you know, there may be somebody over on one side of the monument who's snapping a picture, and they see a crack in the foundation of the monument, in the base of the monument. And so, well, the, the statue is very beautiful, um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's an incredible monument. There is a flaw. And that person over on that side sees the flaw and may get real focused on the flaw and miss out on all the rest of the beauty, that the vast majority of the monument is flawless and amazing to look at and, and is awesome. And then the other person on the other side is seeing nothing but just the flawless part of it. And so their viewpoint is that it's perfect. There's just absolutely nothing wrong with it. Well, we all know there's nothing and no one here that's perfect. Only Jesus, who walked on this earth 2,000 years ago, lived a perfect life. And so, so we need to just be appreciating that everybody is looking at what's going on in this world, what's going on in our life, from their limited viewpoint. And what we need to do, as these, as these passages of Scripture are telling us, is to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, because it's God who sees everything everything. He knows everything. And so I hope that's helpful to you. And so you can you can be repeating stuff that you think may be true, but it may not be entirely true. Be careful of what you're what you're spreading around. Be careful of the words that come out of your mouth. Now we're going to drop down to verse 15 where it says the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. You know when we're living for God and we are righteous, not because of our own righteous. Now we are, as we saw, to live um, to the best of our ability a holy life, to do what we can to please God. Um, when we learn what's right, we ought to be doing what's right. When we learn what's wrong, we ought to be uh, abstaining from those wrong things. But, but the righteousness that we have as believers in Jesus Christ it's not our righteousness, but it's His righteousness that has been given to us, placed upon us. He has removed our unrighteousness from us and clothes us in the righteousness of God that's found in Jesus Christ. And so God hears the righteous. His ears are open to our cry. When you cry out to God as a child of God, He will hear you. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful 
uh, thing to, to know when we're going through some of the difficult times in life, when we're in some of those valleys, when the river does seem to be a little low, a little dry, um, that we can draw upon Him. We can call out to Him and know that He hears us. It says, The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And so once again, you know, I just have to give you that sober warning that there does come a day of judgment for all people. It is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And so make sure that you're right with God. Hear my words tonight. Hear the words of the psalmist tonight. That God loves you. He cares about you. He's got a good plan for you. And He's worthy of your worship and praise. Now, verse number 17, it says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. Over and over, we keep getting this, this repeated to us, that, that when we cry out to God as, as His children, as the righteous of the Lord, clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, that He hears us, and He delivers us out of all our troubles. How many troubles does He deliver you out of? That's right, He delivers you out of all your troubles, not some, not a few of them, not even most of them. He will deliver you out of all your troubles. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Oh, what good news that when we are hurting, when our heart is broken, when we have pain in our life, that that's not when God forsakes us. It's not when He abandons us. No, He comes near to us. It's as if He takes us up into His arms it, and pulls us into Himself. And so just be comforted in hearing that tonight. And, he, and it says that He saves such as has a contrite spirit. And so we need to just humbly come to God and, and, and acknowledge our weaknesses and draw upon His strength. The, the Scripture says here, and I know this isn't the greatest news in the world, but the Bible speaks truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In verse number 19, it tells us, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to have affliction. We've talked about that. None of what's going on in this world should have taken us by surprise, as I've said before, and it because it certainly did not take God by surprise. He didn't uh, hear about this COVID-19 virus going forth and say, how did I miss that one? How did that happen? You know, we let that one slip by. No, God does not ever say anything like that. He is, uh, he is always aware of who we are, what's going on, and... Uh, and He will deliver us out of the affliction, even though the affliction does come. And so God's not taken by surprise. He's not, um, he's not uh, uh, you know, um, wondering what in the world am I going to do about this. No, He's more than able to deliver us out of whatever it is that comes. But we just need to be aware of, we need to have a realization, a reality check, so to speak, so, so to speak, that that bad things are going to happen, and 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 they happen often in life. But but God will deliver you. He will deliver me out of anything that's not according to His plan. You know, uh, we say this all the time. Um, what Jesus said in John chapter ten, verse number ten, that um, the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But I come that you might have life and that you might have that more abundantly. You know, God is, is a God of abundance. He is the God of life. He, is, uh, he is, is the God of more than enough, El Shaddai. And so, so whatever bad is happening in this world, know this, that bad, it's not coming from God. It's coming from the devil. The thief comes to steal. The thief comes to destroy. The thief comes to kill. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly to the full until it overflows. And that's the promise of God, and we need to stay uh, very much aware of that. Jesus, He loves you, and He cares for you. Now let's go to verse number 19. 
It says, I'm sorry, we just, just finished 19. Let's go to verse number 20. It says, uh, he guards all of his bones, talking about the righteous man of God or, or woman of God. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate righteous, the righteous shall be condemned. And so God, he will judge. He will make an account. Uh, he will get people who sin against him, sin against his people. They will give an account to God. And so we need to be aware of that. And so the Lord redeems us. Um, from evil, um, but he will slay, he will judge the wicked. He will cause them to come to an end. And there is going to be a judgment. There is going to be a wrath of God that's going to be poured out one day. And so, um, so if you have people that are giving you a hard time in life, that they are condemning you, that they are that they are um, slandering you, that they are mistreating you. Just just leave it in God's hands. He'll take care of it. Just know that, that vengeance is His and He will repay. Um, but we are the children of God. And so we have this, this promise um, once again. <laughs> Let me get back here and, and get my scriptures uh, tuned in. Verse number 22. There we go. This is our final scripture in our passage. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust him shall be condemned. So we see the unrighteous will one day be condemned, but the righteous, they will not be condemned. We will be able to stand before God, and, uh, and he will open his arms to us and say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord, and we will live with him for all of eternity. He redeems our soul. He saves us from our sin. He is a good and a loving God. And as we see from the scripture, He blesses His people. I hope you are someone who is trusting in God. And if you are not, let me just encourage you um, today as we... Uh, begin to wrap up this particular message that God loves us. He cares about us. And I believe that He's calling out to some individuals that may be watching tonight um, that realize I'm not a tree that's planted by the waters. I'm, I'm dry, experiencing dryness in my life and there is no moisture. There is no water source uh, that I'm able to draw from. I don't have roots going down into the everlasting supply of living water, but I want to be saved. Well, if that's you, you can be saved. You can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. He loves you. He cares about you. And He will save you from your sin. And all you have to do is pray a simple prayer. All you have to do is call upon the Lord and you will be saved. You will be forgiven of any sin that you have. If that's you and you would like to pray a prayer tonight where you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you do that by making a decision to make Him the Lord of your life, to renounce sin and to choose righteousness, to choose to live for Him for the rest of your life, all you have to do is, is uh, repeat after me, pray this prayer from your heart, and you will be saved. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for Jesus who came to purchase a place in heaven for me. He lived a righteous and holy life. He never sinned. But I realize that I have sinned. I've sinned often. I've offended you. I have so much unrighteousness in my life. And I need Jesus to wash my sins away. I need Him to remove my unrighteousness and clothe me in His righteousness. So right now, tonight, I choose Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I ask you to be my Savior, and I choose to make you the Lord of my life. I will live for you from this day forward. 
And because I've prayed this prayer, and I know your word is true, I believe and I know in my heart that I am a child of God. I am born again, and I will live with you for all of eternity. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. I love you, and I worship you. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, please get a hold of me and let me know all about it. I want to rejoice with you. And if there's anything I can do to help you in in walking out uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ, I certainly want to do that. I do have an encouragement to, to share with you. Um, do this. Beginning today, go to the Gospel of John and read a chapter a day from that Gospel. Read it right through the whole book of John. And as you do, you'll begin to get to know your Lord and Savior. If there's anything that I can do for you, uh, again, just please let me know. And that goes for all of you, Journey family. I know we're going to be gathering together again. I know that the they're in stages going to be um, uh, releasing some of the restrictions that we're experiencing in life. But if you're having anything that you need, any challenges that you're facing, please reach out to me. I want to help you. I love you. Pastor Lisa loves you. Chris loves you. And we want to do whatever we can to assist you. If it's uh, picking up groceries and bringing them to you, running an errand, helping you in any way, um, we're here for you. And so just let us know and, and, um, and, and we'll get right on it. But in the meantime, we're going to let you go tonight. We love you. We'll see you Sunday morning for the next live stream. God bless you. And just know this, Jesus is Lord.